Welcome to the WT FFF Special Series, brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP, where your hosts, Tom and Tracy Hazard, explore the all about the what of 3D workflows from concept to print. So, hey, we're continuing talking about 3D education here on WTFFF, and we are talking 3D education curriculum. And I, we wanted to bring this in because we've just sort of set the standards for talking about bringing more steam in. We talked about what's going on in higher education. We talked about, you know, how that leads into other things. And we've now we want to talk a little bit about that curriculum development. And in a post-COVID world, that's really difficult, right? It's, it's almost like going back to square one. It is. While this episode that we're sharing with you today is a really great episode, talking about the creation of a 3D print curriculum for teachers to use, it, it's a very important episode, very worth your time. But we want to talk with you about this today now because there are a whole lot of new things to consider. We've almost hit the reset button on education in the world, certainly in America and the United States, with distance learning, you know, and, and I sure hope that in the 2020, 2021 school year, everybody can stay in their schools the whole year. But there is some concern that there may be other times in the future where people may have to be taught from home again. Right. And, you know, this, so this episode that we're airing is an interview we did with middle school teacher, uh, Cindy Schultz. She's teacher of the year in San Diego. And she ha was really talking about the whole process of how she was kind of forced into putting 3D printing into her classroom and then how she began to love it. And, but also the challenges of doing it. And so I think it's a really good view of how it is when you've now got this on your plate, right? Yeah, when it's forced upon you, right? right? Because I remember that, you know, a little, just, a, I remember one really good detail about this episode is she really wanted nothing to do with it when she was forced to do it. And I have to say, as a parent of kids that have been home distance learning, as a parent, I want nothing to do with being a teacher and teaching them. Right. Look, we know a lot about 3D printing and we want nothing to do with creating 3D education curriculum for our own kids, right? We want to be able to rely on our teachers. We want to be able to rely on that. But now we run into even other challenges that Cindy references and she's talking about in some of the episodes. It's like the challenges of when your printers break down and you only have one printer and do you have a tech staff and are you, is that you? Um, are you doing that? And do we need to use more service bureaus? And so I think she's she talks about some collaboration that she was doing and how she learned and working with some makerspaces and working with companies to sort of develop the curriculum together. And so thinking about how teachers can stay in this idea of creating great 3D education curriculum, but not have to handle the tech, this is where industry and education can cooperate together to really make this a robust system for our children and make it as we go up into higher education as well, make it simpler and easier for everyone to learn and to create and to build at the same time, right? Like do all of those things. And so thinking about some of the challenges right here and what she's referencing, I think this is really gonna open your eyes to thinking about how can we rethink how it's gonna happen now? And, and I think this is a necessity. This has been forced on all of us. And, you know, uh, there's a lot to be learned here, but I do still think this is a jumping off point. I see a future episode after this series with HP, whatever new series we do after that, we're really going to have to hone in on and, and focus on somebody that now has done this in a distance learning application. Right. So and I think how, it's a great foundation. And really thinking about how maker spaces and print service bureaus and those kinds of things can be a part of the solution as well. Some of you may be really suffering from not having anyone in your maker space right now, not being able to charge those kind of recurring fees and, and you know, all of those things because you can't open up your facility yet or, you know, hopefully you have opened up by the time this is airing, but you may not. And you may be challenged with how am I going to do this in a co-working style space which is getting harder and harder to do. And how am I going to get people back? Maybe working with and closer with your teachers and really working on that 3D education curriculum like this is going to help everyone benefit, especially our students, which is what we really want to happen at the end of the day. We want to make our teacher's life easier so that the students learn more. We want them both things to happen at the same time, right? 
And Cindy talks a lot about how that happens, how that is created within the environment. So I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you're going to be able to hear from Cindy Schultz again. Well, hi, Cindy. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. It's my pleasure. So today we really want to talk to you because as teacher of the year, we know that you're struggling with how to teach innovatively every day in your classroom and in your school district. So tell us a little bit about the challenges related to 3D printing and integrating that in. Well, I think the biggest challenge for me as a teacher is trying to find out the best way to teach it to the students but also making sure that they're learning along the way. So it's really easy to take something as cool as a 3D printer and see it as a toy, as just an object in the classroom, as something fun to play with. Kids are just making toys to play with and really getting people to understand the value of 3D printing and what it can bring to education. So not only are students learning about 3D designing, taking a simple object that they may draw a picture, you know, on a paper two-dimensionally and being able to take that and create it in a three-dimensional space is pretty challenging. But then for the students to be able to see that printed and hold it in their hands and manipulate it gives them a lot of power but it also engages them in their learning. And so when you take any type of topic or subject matter and you incorporate the 3D printing into it, it allows the educational learning component to become more powerful. Well, you know, that's really interesting. So we've been hearing from a lot of educators who are in a way struggling with which classroom the 3D printer belongs in. So where is it in your school district? Well, I teach math and science for our seventh and eighth grade program. So, you know, I think science is the easiest one to give it to because I think science can lend itself to larger projects, to creating 3D models. But I also was talking to my history teacher about some of the projects that we've done in the past. And like our, we do a China artifact project where the kids learn about China, they learn about medieval time, and they create a, an artifact box where they show kind of relics of the time period and then they have to describe what those relics mean and I think the 3D printer could easily fit into the history classroom as well. I honestly think that a 3D printer belongs in everyone's classroom, even language arts. Think about, you know, trying to inspire students to write and how cool would it be if they could create something out of their own minds, their creativity, their imagination and to be able to turn around and write about it. I think it belongs in everyone's classroom. So like create a visualization of the character they're writing about. I love that. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's really interesting because we're hearing some education groups that are starting to actually put them in a more lab situation so that it's kind of way back when when we were young and we were taking we all had to take typing classes to begin with. But then you were expected to use wow, a typewriter or the right. computer. We did take did typing that. in seventh and eighth You're grade. Right. Yeah. Yep. So you, had, you were taking that and you were expected to use it in all of your classrooms from that point forward and type all of your reports. Well, the computer was the same way when it came into the classroom as well. So do you think the 3D printer belongs there or do you like having it much closer to you and your lessons? Oh my goodness, I think it's better. So one of the things as a teacher, when I first started <laughs> about 10 years ago, woohoo! one of the things that I found was we had these computer labs and as a teacher telling my students, okay, well, I know you're finished and you're ready to start typing, but we have to wait because our designated day to go to the computer lab isn't for two more days. So you're going to have to wait and do something else. I think is a disservice to our students. I think mm -hmm. our students are growing up in a technology world where it's at their fingertips and we have to be able to teach them how to use that technology effectively be able to determine, yes, I'm ready to start typing. So yes, I'm going to use the computer or I've done my 3D design work. So now I'm ready to start printing. I think it needs to be at their fingertips. It needs to be right there in the classroom with the students so that they can see it, they can feel it, they understand how it works. If there's a technology problem, how to handle it, how to problem solve. If they see it printing and it's printing incorrectly, they can fix it. I just, to me, I have a hard time isolating subjects, isolating equipment, technology. I think it should all be available at all times to all of our students. I think that's a great point and really an interesting one. But at the same time, I also think there's a challenge for you as well because you have a limited class time. Time frame. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I think because you, aren't you doing block classes in seventh and eighth grade at that point? We are. For four years, we used to be self-contained seventh and eighth grade. So I used to teach all subject areas as a middle school oh. teacher. So that was definitely challenging in and of itself. But now we do block. But there are times where we'll do like a, a special 
Science Day or a special history day where we focus on one of our projects. So we have a cell museum project coming up where we'll spend the whole day showcasing our science project to the campus and to the public and the community. But it not it challenging, though, to get something printed within that time frame of your class and that it, you know, what happens when you have printer problems? Is it distracting? And that's the case that a lot of educators make for having it in a lab versus the classroom, which, though, I right. really appreciate your <laughs> ideology about how to teach it, which I agree with. Right. So do you find that challenging technically still? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely challenges when you deal with technology in general. I mean, we're one-to-one iPads, and right now one of our apps that we use daily is not working. But I also feel like students need to learn how to problem solve and how to get around the problem. And so I feel like if for some reason the 3D printer is down for two weeks and we're in the middle of a project, okay, well, what can we do instead? Well, let's get the cardboard out. Let's start building and constructing something. And so I think that there's value in that as well. Kids need to know that technology isn't perfect that the Wi-Fi may be down for the day. So if you were planning on researching today and the Wi-Fi is down and you can't use the Wi-Fi to be able to search and surf the web, then what can we do instead? Okay, well, let's work on another aspect of our project. So I feel like there's some valuable learning lessons that go along with it. And yes, there are challenges, absolutely. And the time it takes to print something right now is definitely a challenge. So, you know, it may take one student's project 30 minutes, which is almost the whole time period of one of my classes, but they know that they have to give me their designs well in advance so that I can get them printed. And then I print all day long. I mean, the kids walk in the door, it's printing, they leave, it's printing. And when I leave the end of the day, I'm printing one last project. So I would love to have more in my classroom for sure. Yeah. (laughs) You know, Cindy, we have had several teachers reach out to us over the recent months, especially from like the Midwest that are just getting into it or they got a grant and they gotten some money and they've been told, hey, you need to start teaching 3D printing, figure out how to do it. Um, Can you give us an example of a good project that you do with your students that not only teaches them 3D printing, but also gets at some of the other disciplines within what you're teaching of math and science? Right. So right now we're working on cell biology. The students have been researching individual cell parts, what their structure and function are. And so we're working on building a life-size interactive cell. So each of my classes will create one plant cell, one bacteria cell, and one animal cell. And as a team, they have to design all of the parts of that cell. And so along with their 3D part that they either print... 3D print them or build them or construct them. They also have to create like a QR code that goes to an analogy explaining their cell part and its function to younger kids, as well as a video that describes the importance of their cell part to the overall cell. So some of the kids, about four or five of them per group will be 3D printing their part, while other kids, like obviously the cell wall isn't something you're going to 3D print because it's extremely large. It's ceiling to floor. (laughs) But to me, I feel, I think the powerful piece of 3D printing, it can't be the end all be all. Like your whole project can't revolve around the 3D printer. But what I have found to be the easiest way to integrate it is to just find a project you're already doing and ask yourself, what could I do with the 3D printer that the kids have done before just using like cardboard or, you know, styrofoam balls to create different objects? Now we can use a 3D printer to replicate something, maybe even into a more precise structure. I want to go to your school. (laughs) I want to be your student, Cindy. (laughs) So really, that makes a lot of sense what you're saying. So you're saying if a school is approaching this as maybe in the past what would have been a more traditional industrial arts class that was separated from the rest of the subjects that they're learning, that may be the wrong approach because you make the the whole class about 3D printing. But if you integrate it into your regular course curriculum, you get the benefits of it, but it's not ruled by it. Absolutely. And that's the same thing with technology. That's what we have seen in the technology world and the shift for the last five years is that having this separate computer lab doesn't benefit us. It needs to be integrated in everything we do. Now, a student may pull a textbook off a shelf to find a definition of a word, or they may say, well, I need to find out a little bit more. So I'm going to now go to the web and look up even deeper what that word means you know, that the book couldn't cover. And so I feel like it's important for kids to understand how to determine what the best tool for the project is. So the 3D printer may answer one student's 
challenge, but it may not answer someone else's. And to segregate out the abilities and the technology and the tools that we have for the kids, I think is a huge disservice. That's a really interesting point. So how to determine what best tool or tech you need for any given challenge you might have, or actually what you're most interested in learning as well. So, you know, it helps someone expand their learning in a particular area, especially if they have much more interest in design, for instance. Mm -hmm, Exactly. We have artists who make the most absolutely beautiful pieces. But then I have students who are like, I can't do art at all. I can't even draw a stick figure, you know. And so those kids may want to do 3D design work because it makes sense to them and they're able to express themselves creatively without having to draw with paper, pencil or, you know, crayon or color pencil or whatever they want to use. So I feel like, I mean, students are diverse and we know this and we've known this forever, but we have to be able to allow them to have the tools in order to express themselves the best way they know how. Oh, that's wonderful, Cindy. So what do you wish you had in your classroom today? Well, I would love to have another 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> so if you win Teacher of the Year in the bigger scope of uh, San Diego County, do you get anything for that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is my first time experience. You'll have to say that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So tell me a little bit about how you got trained to learn 3D printing. Did you just happen to already know how to do it? Or when they, you know, they said, here, you can have a 3D printer. Well, how did that happen for you in your school? Okay, well, this is a really interesting story. I actually, my principal came up to me last year and asked me, do you want a 3D printer for your classroom? And I said, no. I'm like, no, I don't want a toy in my classroom. I don't need another piece of equipment that's going to sit and collect dust. And I think that's one of the big disservices that our administration and our district people are doing is that they're dumping these in the teacher's laps and saying, here, have fun, use them. We don't know where to start. We don't know how it fits. We don't know how it functions. And so I went last year the whole year just thinking, nope, there's no reason for it in my classroom. And until you tell me the benefits of it, I am not going to use it. You know, it's an expensive piece of equipment. I don't want someone to spend that kind of money on me unless we know that it's something that's going to benefit the kids. Boy, so I can't wait summer, to hear what turned it. This sounds like <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> So over the summer, the interesting situation is there's a gentleman in town who does a lot with Steammaker Fest and Steammaker Workshop, and he does a lot with Steam in the schools. And so I've kind of worked with him a little bit over the last couple of years. And so over the summer, I didn't really have any big projects. I didn't have any workshops or conferences that I was attending. So I was kind of free. It was like my first summer off, which was nice. But he came to me and he said, well, what do you think about writing some curriculum for 3D printing? And I thought to myself, I could totally just say no and walk away from it. But I thought, you know, this is cutting edge. This is something that is pretty revolutionizing. What if I took the summer and I actually investigated how this could be incorporated into the classroom? And so the thing that I really want to stress is I was paid for that time. And that doesn't happen very often to teachers. Teachers are pretty much expected to do all the investigating and training all on our own without any extra compensation for our time. We're just expected to do it. Who paid for your value because they said, hey, we're going to pay you for the summer to work on this. And I did. I dove in and I said, how kindergarten through eighth grade can I make 3D printing work in the classroom? And so I created curriculum for kindergartners, for first graders, all the way up to eighth graders. And actually, a lot of the curriculum in seventh and eighth grade can be incorporated into high school. I think it's just the cutting edge, just the the tip of the iceberg. I think as teachers, we can easily share more and more projects as we go along. But I think for me, being able to just get it started and look into the next generation science standards and find all of these amazing ways to incorporate 3D printing was so invaluable to me. But I wouldn't expect all teachers to be able to have that time or energy to be able to do that on their own. And I think it's unfair to ask them to do so. You know, that's really interesting because this is like one of the topics we talk about all the time is that it's the same problem for design, that none of them are taking the initiative to pay to have good designs put in to show people really what it's capable of. So now people have this perception in mind that it just is a toy and it makes tchotchkes. Right. And so <laughs> if they took the time to spend on a designer to make good, interesting designs that push the envelope of what 3D printing can do without becoming art pieces so that it still has that STEAM functional focus, then I think that it would do the same thing. So both the education and design components are actually what's been holding back the 3D printing from tipping. Absolutely. So yeah, I think that's fabulous. You're right. That's very forward thinking. 
you went from rejecting the idea of a 3D printer <laughs> altogether <laughs> to then being asked if you would help create curriculum. I've got a free summer. I'm going to get paid. <laughs> Why the heck not? To then being completely converted to the point where you're using it in your classes every day. Is that correct? Yep, yep. Wow, that's <laughs> so, great. So along in the process, I mean, you had to educate yourself on 3D printing. To, well, you know, that's kind of interesting, too, because I wrote the curriculum over the summer without ever touching a 3D printer. So Wow. Yeah, which is quite interesting. Well, we had one at the Steammaker workshop, and there was a gentleman that was working with us who was doing all the printing. So he was printing and designing the curriculum that I was writing. So I would write a project and he would create the project and print it so that we had like examples and things. And it was kind of a way to flesh out the curriculum. Did this work? Did this not work? How can we tweak it? So we did a lot of trial and errors. And so he was supposed to train me on how to actually use the 3D printer at some point. But we had some technical difficulties. There was a backup on one of the printers because one of the interns kind of did something wrong and long story short the computer the printer was dead for a while and then I had to go back to school so I went to school with a printer on my desk and I'm printing something and I had no clue how to use it and so it was quite interesting because a couple weeks later when I got my official printer for my classroom I called up Victor who's the owner of the workshop maker workshop and he came out and spent like 30 minutes with me gave me the rundown gave me a quick tutorial and then i was off and running <laughs> yeah you know that's the thing that i keep saying to people is like the harder part is figuring out what to make and how to design it and how to use that all of that process running the printer it's just a printer it's, it's a yeah. piece of equipment exactly <laughs> you plug it in and you hit print <laughs> so yeah it's the anticlimactic part that getting yeah. it off the print <laughs> that's the great part <laughs> exactly <laughs> Well, this is fascinating. Yeah, I I, that's such a great story. <laughs> so where do you want to go next with it, Cindy? I've been grappling with this for the last couple of weeks. I think my struggle right now, and I see it and I recognize it and I want to overcome it, is I know that 3D printing can do so much more than what I'm doing in the classroom. What I'm doing in my classroom is like the tip of the iceberg. And I know that my kids are going to take it and they're going to fly with it because they're going to so surpass what I could even imagine you can do with a 3D printer because my brain just isn't holding on to that capability, if that makes sense. Because it I feel like I'm does. older. <laughs> it completely does. Uh, you know, this is where Tom and I got super excited about the power of 3D printing. So you, you, we have kind of the similar story to you is like, I said, no printer, no printer. We don't need it. What are we going to do with it? And eventually I caved. And yeah. when I caved, all of a sudden the light bulb goes on. Oh yeah. my gosh, this is amazing. Look at what we can do. But what I'm so excited about is within about, I'd say 10 years, we're going to see this generation with minds that are capable of thinking in three dimensions in a way yes. that we cannot today because it's very hard. Like, I mean, we work in three dimensions all the time. We're product designers. It's what we do. Right. But that has come from 20 years of practice. You don't just have that skill. It just doesn't work like that. You have to practice it every day and learn about it. So the way that their minds are going to work is going to open up the possibilities to things, inventions and possibilities of how things are made that we never imagined before. And that excites me. And that's, I think, for me as a teacher, like my goal is not to teach my kids what I know. My goal is to teach them how to surpass what I know and how to take the little introduction that I can give them into 3D printing and to take it to a whole nother level level that I can't even fathom. And that's, I think, the new way of teaching, I think, that we have to wrap our brains around is I'm not the expert anymore, but my job is to get you, if you're interested in this avenue, if you're interested in sciences, how can I get you motivated to blow me out of the water? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's just so great. And I think about that all the time, you know, when we are getting our kids started in 3D printing and I keep thinking about what is she going to do? I can't wait yes. to see how it's going to turn out. And the idea that she's going to surpass me is actually so exciting. Isn't it? Yeah. I know. But I think teachers are afraid of that. They're afraid of not being the expert anymore. They're afraid of not having all the answers. They're afraid of not per se in quotes, be smarter than the kids. And I feel like that's such a disservice to the kids because I feel like they should be able to go so much farther than we could even think we could go. Yeah. And I think that's the power in teaching that mm. we have. And we just have to let it go. We have to let our kids go. <laughs> it's really fascinating to me because I haven't thought about it quite this way until you said it. But really, you're saying a 3D printer 
is just a modern chalkboard. It's a tool. Yeah. It's another tool. And that tool has evolved, I'm sure, from the chalkboard to many other things, but to the computer. Actually, probably earlier, it went to like the carbon copy. What was that Ditto machine they used to make <laughs> copies on way back Oh my then? gosh, now you're really and dating us, Tom. No, no, but seriously, <laughs> it, there's, there's different pieces of technology all on the way. And when it comes to education, 3D printing is just one more tool in your toolbox. Exactly. Exactly. Very cool. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today, Cindy. Uh, We really appreciate it. And we hope that it inspires other teachers and other education districts and other things to just get out there and start 3D printing because there's resources to help you. And it's just super exciting to see what it's going to do for the future. Absolutely. It's been fun. Wow, was that fun? I know. I'm so excited (laughs) to have someone as excited as I am about 3D printing and the future and the possibilities of it. And I'm refreshed by the perspective on teaching as well as the perspective on technology. I think, you know, we get too excited about, oh, we've got these new 3D printers in our school. Isn't this great? But you know what? It's what you do with them that is important. And if you put tech in its place and you really concentrate on how to do something with technology you're going to get the kids' minds energized in the right way. You know, and my mind was really stuck in the sort of, I guess, preconception of the old industrial arts classes like we had in school or a home ec class where you might learn to sew. As so often we've talked about about the 3D printer sort of being equivalent to a sewing machine in some ways, right? And really, I'm sure there are schools that are doing that and there may be nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with concentrating on a new technology and and teaching kids intensive how to work with it, right? But doesn't it make so much sense just to make it be like a computer, like an iPad, you know, and it's like a regular printer. I mean, it's integrated into your curriculum in your class. It's just one of the things that students can use. They're not forced to use it. Right. right? Which is really interesting. But you don't think about it. It's like in any science class, when we were in seventh and eighth grade, we had to learn how to properly use a microscope, how to, you know, so you're going to have an orientation part of your program that's going to teach you about how to use the equipment and how it works and everything. But there's going to be the light bulb going on in kids when they see their buddy trying this out and their girlfriend doing that. I mean, that's going to happen and it's going to ignite each other to do something great too, which I just love the idea of that. You know, whether it's group projects or individual projects, you're still going to get that kind of cross pollination of ideas and thinking. I love that. I do too. You know, and it really made me think that some of these project packs and kits that we're seeing starting to come out, and we've talked on our podcast about, gee, a great potential project. You know, we talked about the digital sundial thing. I mean, having projects like that, I think are a very good thing to do. I guess I envisioned those being used maybe a lot more in school curriculum situations, but maybe they won't be used there in some school districts as much. Maybe that's what students or parents are going to go out and find to use to help further the education and go beyond just using 3D printing in the classroom for that assignment. I'm sure it'll happen all different ways, but... Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think about it, though, I think as a parent, and as a parent, I feel extremely responsible, though, for providing my child tools. Like, that's my job as a parent. My job isn't to make her learn. My job is to inspire her to love to learn so that she'll go out there and do it herself. I mean, this is like what we had trouble. Our oldest, Alex, I couldn't understand why she didn't love reading because I completely love reading. And so I tried every method possible to get her to love it. And that's what you do as a parent. You just go out there and you find tools that is going to ignite their excitement and interest. In the case of books, I tried to find genres that I thought she would like. And it took vampires and her being, and you know, (laughs) she had to be old enough for vampire love stories for it to ignite a reading bug. But I tried everything. And earlier, it didn't work. But that's what we do as parents is that we go out there and we seek tools and we seek ways to do this. And I think teachers have to do the same thing. That's what I found so interesting about the ways. It's like you provide opportunities so that the ones who want to go further can. Well, and then once those that do start doing it, the other students say, hey, what's that? That's cool. I want to try that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I'm super excited about how these are going. So I hope that we're going to get into Cindy's classroom at some point. I just would love to see some of the things that the students are making and really hear how much at the end of the year that they really enjoyed having 3D printing in their classroom. So that should be really interesting. We'll do a follow up. Yeah, I think we're going to have that opportunity. And certainly when we do, we'll make sure we document that and do a follow up, write a blog post about it. Exactly. But for now, if this is a subject that 
is of particular interest to you, please go to our website, 3dstartpoint.com, and find the blog post show notes for this episode, where you will find the links to Steam Maker Workshop and the curriculum that Robo3D helped to create. Yeah, and I want to also point out, we'll put a link to another blog post that I wrote very recently about this idea that you need to start paying your teachers to learn over the summer. That's a real key there. If you really want this to be done right in your district and right in your classrooms, you should be paying them to learn. And that is a critical factor. I had written a blog post about a week ago about that. So we'll add that in. I think it's great that she got paid for it. I, I mean, I, clearly that made the difference in this happening in this case. Right? right. And look at the power of what she's able to do with that. Amazing. So, you know, I think that's not too much. You're going to buy an expensive piece of equipment. You need to provide training and payment to learn that. <laughs> I yeah. just think that that's a no brainer in that in the scope of a program that you're going to put in place in your school. You need it to not sit there and become a big old paperweight. Right. Well, if any of you listening to this podcast are educators out there who have had a, a similar or even a different experience in how you got started in 3D printing and how it was integrated into your school system, please reach out to us. You can reach us on 3dstartpoint.com. There's a place where you can submit a question or just email us at info at 3dstartpoint.com. Yeah, we'd love to share your stories. So thank you again for listening. This has been Tracy and Tom. On the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the WTFFF special series brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP. You can access all the resources mentioned in this episode and all the other episodes in this series by going to 3dstartpoint.com slash HP. We invite you to reach out to us on social at 3D Startpoint and at Z by HP and let us know what you are creating in 3D.